So on the bench today then, I've got uh, one of these uh, 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi panel antennas. There's quite a few of these uh, turned up on eBay recently. It's not a new thing. I've seen them, uh, you know, about over the years, but um, there's quite a bit of competition on the pricing with these now. And uh, I picked this one up for £6.50, £3 shipping. It's uh, one of those adverts where uh, the seller has a little uh, Union Jack in one corner of the uh, ad and uh, a little picture of the Royal Mail uh, postal van at the bottom. But uh, it is a Chinese seller. But, uh, you know, for £6.50, it makes you wonder how they can make any money on these. And uh, we've got a little uh, outside bracket as well to uh, put this uh, on a wall outside if you wish to. So uh, let's take a look at it and see if it's any good then. So here's the uh, bracket that they uh, give you to uh, install this to a uh, wall if you choose to. Also quite a good bracket where it's got this base here that you can use it uh, a little bit like a tripod. And uh, you know, it's quite a nice uh, little construction. I have used uh, some of these in the past with other installs, but they do rust. Uh, something chronic if you put these outside doesn't take a lot of rain or moisture to start these off rusting so uh, you know a little bit of uh, coat of paint on these uh, wouldn't go amiss if you don't want it to look too unsightly stuck to your wall but again it's just amazing how they can uh, sell all this for £6.50 and make uh, money I mean you've got your little allen key here for the bracket they even give you the screws and uh, the uh, plugs and everything just amazes me how they can make money on this so the antenna itself has certainly got some uh, weight to this it gives you uh, a feeling that uh, is definitely some quality going on here and that's uh, probably all down to the thickness of the uh, reflector on the back here it's a piece of aluminium and uh, it's got the uh, threads here in the back so you can thread the uh, bracket in there there's also this uh, grommet around the uh, coax itself so that's probably going to be waterproof and if there's a, a gasket running around the edge here then uh, it's certainly going to uh, give protection uh, for ingress of uh, rain if it uh, does indeed have a uh, gasket in there so you could probably get away with mounting this outside but uh, we'll take a look at that when we take a look at uh, the inside and uh, have a look at what makes this tick but uh, before I start taking it apart let's uh, hook it up to a uh, alpha card and uh, see how well it performs see what kind of signals we can pick up with this so let's give this a quick scan then see how well it does uh, on the access point see what we can pick up so we've picked up a uh, few access points there we picked up 12 access points now we can forget about one of those access points that's uh, at 100% because that's actually here in my lab. But uh, I can safely say that uh, that's pretty poor for the access points that you can pick up here in my lab, especially for a uh, directional panel antenna that's supposed to be 14 dBi. That is a pretty poor uh, result, to be honest with you. Let me just swap the panel antenna out with a single bi quad antenna that's uh, operating around 9 db i and then you'll uh, be able to see the difference between the two so here we are with the uh, single bi quad uh, antenna then and uh, as i said this is around uh, 9 db i and you can already see it's picked up a few more access points but you can also see that the access points it has picked up are considerably uh, stronger signals let me bring up the screen grab that i did of the uh, previous test there and if i pop it over here we can see that uh, the majority of the signals that it is picking up are considerably more uh, percentage wise than that big um you know apparently 14 dbi uh, panel antenna so I'm a little bit disappointed with the performance of that panel antenna. I expected a little bit more out of it. So uh, let's get it on the bench then and uh, unscrew it all and take a look at what's actually inside this antenna. So let's take a look at the uh, inside of this then. It's just held in by these uh, Phillips screws on the back here. And as I said, if you're going to uh, mount this outside, I'd expect there to be a gasket in between as well. But uh, 
for the price point probably not so two more screws I'll carefully lift the reflector off because it will probably be connected to the coax so there's no gasket there and it doesn't look like the reflector is uh, connected we can see the coax here and uh, we've got a screw through the middle here and it looks like they've been cheap got the uh, coax there and uh, you know just uh, crimped it around here fluid it with solder to make this loop and just looped it in underneath the screw tighten the screw down to hold it in place but uh, it's not done a very good job of holding it in place and that's possibly why uh, it didn't perform that well you know it was a little bit poor as I said I expected a little bit more from a uh, 14 dBi antenna than uh, what we showed in that test there and uh, I think uh, when we put this back together if I uh, connect that properly up to the uh, aluminium uh, reflector here I think you'll see uh, a big increase in performance so as for the uh, driven element then we've got the four uh, driven elements uh, squares here in the corners it's just a uh, typical panel antenna we've got the transmission lines going off to uh, the two pairs here we've also got this foam in the middle I'm not sure why that's there because the uh, aluminium reflector sits on these uh, posts here that's how uh, you know they get the separation from the uh, driven element to the uh, panel antenna itself the main driven element part but uh, although this isn't connected in any way so it's possibly there just to keep that uh, distance especially if you tilt the antenna and it wobbles around on these uh, little uh, pins here which it does as you can see so that's why that's there obviously but uh, a pretty uh, simple construction and on the opposite side of the panel here we've got this white solder mask and again I don't know how they managed to make these for that uh, price point and still make money on this I mean uh, having the solder mask on here is really uh, a bit OTT because you're not going to see this I mean uh, you know it's facing outwards protected by the uh, enclosure itself and uh, I don't see any reason to have the white solder mask there but uh, they obviously have and I've just measured the elements using the calipers and uh, it's a pretty standard uh, sizing for uh, 2.4 gigahertz we've got 45 millimeters by uh, 43 millimeters here this is the uh, horizontal plane and that's the vertical plane so pretty standard measurement you can find that kind of measurement on lots of designs online so I've got a little solder tag here that I'm going to attach to the outer braid of the coax and then we can use that to connect permanently to the uh, aluminium reflector of this antenna and I'm pretty sure uh, in fact I'm a hundred percent sure that with this in place we'll see a uh, pretty decent performance increase and it will operate you know around 14 dBi certainly a lot better than we did in the first test so I've got the little uh, solder tag soldered on there and I've protected it with a little bit of heat shrink tubing as well but I'm now uh, with the dilemma of trying to get this little screw screw the uh, screw through the solder tag there and then attach it you know permanently uh, tighten it up quite a bit to the uh, back reflector here and uh, that's uh, proving to be a little bit difficult it's certainly uh, I've got to get it at the right angle there's not a lot of maneuvering room and that's probably why that uh, solder tag that they fashioned just by uh, soldering uh, the outer braid and looping it round it probably got pulled out when they were trying to put this together in uh, the manufacturing uh, side of things so you know they've made this down to a price point and as I said I don't know how they make the money but uh, that final little thing there by not uh, putting uh, shelling out the extra money for a uh, tag like this to uh, position it with the screw permanently against the reflector there that's what's cost them and uh, that little thing there you know has just ruined uh, the antenna but hopefully I'll be able to get this uh, attached and then we can give it a test now as I said probably uh, the performance wise a lot of it is down to the uh, back reflector not being grounded there but I'm not sold on this coax here that in a dielectric there doesn't look right to me not for a microwave uh, low loss coax it uh, you know it looks pretty cheap stuff 
a little bit like TV coax, which is a big no-no when it comes to microwave products. So let's give this a uh, scan then, see if we've improved things. And we do seem to be picking up uh, a few more access points and the access points that we've picked up do seem to be a little bit stronger. So it just goes to show what a difference it can make to have your uh, reflector grounded compared to a uh, ungrounded reflector. Certainly a lot better. Whether it's 14 dBi or not, I don't know. Um, if I put it up a little bit higher, it would certainly improve the signal on some of those a little bit. But as a test uh, compared to the first one, which was pretty poor, and uh, this is at the same height, you can see that we've certainly improved things by uh, grounding that reflector. So to wrap up then, now that uh, I've fixed the problem with the uh, back reflector not being grounded, it's not too bad of a uh, antenna, especially for uh, six pounds. I mean, I still say I don't know how they uh, make these for uh, that kind of money. But um, the problem with the reflector just shows the problem with uh, build quality with something as cheap as this. And uh, I'll put a photograph here now of uh, some 5.8 gigahertz uh, antennas, panel antennas that I got in. I just got them in to use the cases to modify and put my own design in there. But uh, you can see from that picture the kind of uh, build quality you get, uh, you know, with uh, a selection of different ones. And uh, possibly this is exactly the same. You've probably uh, got one of these and it works really fine. A uh, good quick way to see if uh, the uh, reflector is grounded if you get your multimeter put it onto continuity and just uh, put one probe on the back here and uh, put one probe to the uh, outer SMA connector here if you get a contact then uh, the the uh, reflector is grounded if you don't you've probably got the same problem as me so I'll put a link in the description from the seller that I bought this from and uh, you know if you want to uh, take a risk for six pound certainly well worth it you know I mean you're getting a lot of antenna here for uh, six pound and uh, if it is a little bit underpowered you think when you get yours then it's probably a similar kind of fix to what I've just done but uh, any comments or questions drop them below I'll do my best to answer them hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, you give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one